So fancy. Let's go ride. All right, so downstater here. Uh, looking to do a video for you guys today that discusses the basics of adventure motorcycle gear. To be very, very clear, uh, this is not going to be you know, a comprehensive list of equipment you need to go around the world. Uh, that, that's about a 10 part series I would imagine, but uh, I'm gonna cover around 14 or 15 pretty essential items for both you, the rider, and your bike. Um, and again, this is this is to get you going, not to kind of uh, circum circumnavigate the globe. Um, this is this is the absolute what I consider necessities, and it includes the brands that I've kind of fallen to uh, to trust now. Um, as you've seen some of my other some of my other videos, I uh, I've been riding street legally. Oh God, I don't even know how old am I? 38. So yeah, the 20 years legally. Um, and then uh, on just motorcycles in general, probably another eight, maybe more years than that, probably 10 years, something like that. Uh, so about 30 years, I guess, total uh, on two wheels. And needless to say, I've been through a lot of gear. Um, made a lot of, you know, mistakes and a lot of good moves. And basically I wanted to share what works and what doesn't work. And now that I'm really kind of, uh, I really love this segment, you know, the ADB segment. Uh, I've had them all. I've had cruisers. I've had, um, and excuse me if I'm repeating myself. If you've watched the Africa Twin video, you, you've heard some of this before, but I'll repeat it for if, if you haven't. But, you know, I've had almost every kind of bike out there, and uh, they all have their ups and downs, and I like a lot of them, but the reality is this is probably going to be my go-to for a very long time. Can I go here? Yeah, I can. Um... You know, the ADV segment just kind of works for me. It makes a lot more sense than anything else. And uh, yeah, I love it. Yes, it is a pain in the ass to drive on this <laughs> bridge with a truck and another truck passing you. Hey, Downstater here. So I picked a decent little spot in Northwest New Jersey to discuss um, what I would consider the absolute must have basics for adventure style riding, both for your person, you know, on you and for your bike. Um, this is a brief list. This is not, you know, like I said in the, in the beginning, this is not a comprehensive list of what you would need to go around the world. There's, you could write you know, a 10 part series on all of the gear you would need for true adventure riding. But uh, this is at least the basics you need to get right off the bat to just kind of do it safely, efficiently, and be comfortable. You know, I think comfort is a big thing that we all uh, used to not care about. And I think as you get older, you start realizing how nice it is to just be comfortable on the bike. So, um, and it also improves safety. It improves a lot of things. So we're gonna get into that in a second. What I'm going to start with is what's on my person, you know, on me uh, in terms of gear. So I'll start with the most important thing really any rider needs, adventure or not, uh, is a good helmet. Um, I've been through a lot of helmets. I've had cheap HJCs. I've had showies. I've had them all. Um, this was actually from a buddy of mine. It's a Bell MX-9 <coughs> adventure style helmet. I mean, again, you can do whatever you want. I do like having the, the, the brow, the peak, whatever you want to call it, um, but it's not absolutely necessary. Um, but a good helmet with MIPS is definitely something you want to focus on. Warmth, uh, w keeping down wind noise, it can get really annoying when you're out there on the road. <clears throat> so definitely try to invest in a decent helmet. You don't have to spend a lot. I think this helmet retails for like mid twos, maybe high twos, just under $300. It's not a lot of money uh, to keep your brain safe and, uh, and, and it's quiet and it's nice, it's well built. Uh, I've been in a lot of rainstorms with this helmet and I get basically no rain intrusion, which I mean, I've had more expensive helmets than that, that you'd be soaked after five minutes. So anyway, enough on the helmet, definitely invest in something decent. Um, the next thing I'll talk about is a jacket and, and, and your pants. So there's a debate out there between, 
fully waterproof gear and breathable gear, right? I've had Gore-Tex, I've had Climb, you know, the Traverse jacket. Yes, it was great being in a rainstorm with it. Amazing, I was bone dry, it was awesome. I was so thankful for having a waterproof jacket on. But it was horrible in the summer. It was literally like wearing a trash bag on you. No offense, Climb, not that you're probably watching this video, but it wasn't an, an enjoyable experience. Um, and I get it, I'll probably get some hate in the, uh, in the, in the comments. You know, Gore-Tex is great, but in the hot summers of the Northeast, it can be really nasty and, and muggy and just, I, I didn't enjoy it. So what I tend to do now are not waterproof pants or jacket, you know. Uh, these are the Climb Switchbacks. They're kind of like a Carhartt. They have vents, uh, they vent really well in the summer. Um, and they have an, another set of vents right here. You know, they're, they're pretty great uh, and they're not crazy expensive and they don't look, you don't look like a total dork going in to get a coffee somewhere when you're on a trip. You know, if you're all kitted out, you kind of look like, a, like an astronaut walking in there. So I like the look of these, they're, they're kind of more modest. Uh, the jacket's uh, an Icon Raiden UX. I don't even think it's available anymore, but it's a great jacket. I love it. It's got a, you know, a built-in liner. Uh, it does have a, you know, a rain sleeve. I'm not gonna do a Revzilla uh, review here, but it's it's pretty good for what I want. It's short. I like the color. I like the hood. I use it pretty often, um, and it breathes really well. I got a bunch of vents on it, um, and in the summer I ride about how you're seeing it, which really doesn't affect the the armor. It's got all D3O armor, which is another big thing when you're chopping for a jacket. Definitely get flexible armor. You know, good quality armor is <clears throat> worth its weight in gold. So when it comes to the jacket and pants that, that I wear, you're all probably saying, okay, so you're not wearing waterproof gear. What do you do? You're an adventure rider. You're going to hit rain. Absolutely. I've hit it plenty and uh, I've been in downpours. And what I typically now do, well, always do really, is I have uh, rain gear, fully waterproof, slip on, kind of baggy, but but good quality Revit rain gear uh, in my bag. Um, and it's it's so easy to get it on. I've, I've We were upstate one time in a really bad storm and I'd say in about, realistically about a minute, I had all my gear on, my pants, my jacket, and then I hate to be kind of repping climb here a little more than I should, but these are a phenomenal option for your glove situation. There is nothing worse than being in cold, you know, wet conditions with waterlogged hands. It's dangerous, it sucks, it's just horrible. Uh, so these lobster gloves from Climb are just phenomenal. They have, obviously that's why they call them lobster gloves. Um, and I don't know what the actual, you know, name of them is, but uh, there you go, the forecast glove. Good name, good name Climb. Uh, but anyway, these slip over your normal gloves and they're on in about a second. You just throw them on right over your gloves, cinch them and you go back to work, right? You go back to riding. Uh, I've been in absolute downpours with the, uh, the Revit rain gear I have and these on and I'm bone dry and everybody else I'm riding with is just like, ah, oh, this is the worst. So that's how I operate. You know, I'd say 90% of the time I'm riding, it's not raining. So I don't feel the need to wear fully waterproof gear all the time because of the downsides it provides me. Um, and I think this is a pretty good option to mitigate that. You know, it's, it's right here, it's ready to go. I get it out real quick, throw on the pants, throw on the jacket, throw on the gloves, I'm back in action and then I'm not sweating profusely all summer long. Uh, and so that's what works for me. Let's get to the rest of this. Um, the next thing I'll touch on are gloves. I think truly, you know, and I'm kind of going in order of importance for me, um, helmet, jacket, pants, gloves would definitely be next. These are the Inversion Pro, no, these are the regular Inversions. I have the Inversion Pro back there. They're more of like a, a swing month glove. This is a, an actual uh, Gore Windstopper glove. Uh, combined with something I'll talk about later, phenomenal. I could ride in 10 degree weather with these, good to go. They're just, and, and the nice thing is you actually have that textile feel that you want. You can feel your, your, you know, your, your clutch lever, you can feel your brakes, you can feel everything, even though it is kind of a bulky glove, you know? Um, and your fingers don't get lost in there, you're not searching, you're not all bundled up at the bottom. It's, I've had bad gloves, buy good gloves. That's one thing I'll definitely say. Next thing I'll touch on is boots. I, um, these are the TCX Bajas, and I am a huge fan of them. I, uh, I, it was my first time buying TCXs. I've had a couple different brands, and with this style riding, you know, I do ride off-road, but I'm not, there's no need for MX boots. You know, I'm, I'm doing mostly pretty relaxed, um, you know, fire roads, dirt roads, stuff like that. So I do want, you know, protection, um, and, and not just from banging my foot, but also 
cold, rain, uh, I do a lot of river crossings, you know, stuff like that. So I want water protection, I want, you know, uh, freeze protection, I want all that other stuff that a lot of MX boots don't offer. So, um, and they're just not comfortable. You know, I'm doing 400 mile rides, I don't want an MX boot on, it's, it's just too inflexible. So um, I choose these and they are phenomenal. I definitely would suggest them. So that's gonna kind of wrap up what's on me personally. Um, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is what's on the bike. Uh, and this will really wrap up the absolute must haves. Again, I'll probably make a video for cooking and uh, you know sleeping gear and all that someday later. But for now, these are the basics. So let's get to the, the actual bike. All right, so first I'll start off with, again, my list in, is in order of importance to me. Um, and I'll start off with what I think is really the first thing anybody really should do is a, uh, a nice phone mount. So this is actually called a uh, tack form and it's their, I think it's, I think it's the only model they make. They might make powered ones now, but I love it. It's nice and sleek. It's, it's, it's low profile and it really holds your phone securely. So it's, it's a great option for anybody out there. Um, it's also fairly affordable from what I remember. So definitely a good move, you know, and I can do another video on dedicated GPS versus a phone. I personally use an Android phone, which does have a dedicated GPS sensor in it. I don't use Apple. Um, so I, I'm not too concerned about, uh, you know, poor GPS reception. I, I download offline maps and I use my, my phone for everything. And it's, it's never let me down. Uh, it's waterproof, it's rugged, it's great. Uh, and I just see no point in, in giving Garmin, you know, $800 for something that uh, is, is inferior in my opinion. So anyway, you can leave some hate in the comments if you want, but that is the way I operate. Um, and it's a great, great uh, phone, ha phone holder right there. And then you see too, it's got the, the, uh, the Ram kind of elastic. If you need it, if you're really going in some bouncy off-road stuff, you can throw that over it and you're good to go. Next thing I'm going to talk about is the Oxford heated grip. So as you can see, I put the controller, hopefully you can see it right there. Um, that's where I mounted the controller on the Africa twin. The Oxford heated grips are phenomenal and I put them second because I just need them, you know, and not that I'm like some kind of weenie, but they're just so nice to have. And as far as safety goes, I don't have the luxury of riding whenever I want really, you know, I have children, so I take the, the riding time I can get. And often that means riding in the winter and in the cold. And when you start losing your finger dexterity uh, because you're so damn cold, well, that's a bad move and that's your fault with you know the day and age we are and the, and the technology we have definitely go for some good heated grips so love these oxfords i've used a couple to, uh, you know a couple bikes i've had them on and they've just always been great never let me down next thing i'm going to talk about our our luggage you know uh if you're doing adventure style riding you're probably going to have some gear with you and uh you don't have to spend a fortune as i'm about to let you know and show you um these i'll just hit two two notes right now so these are the Nelson Rig uh, Sierra dry bags. They are phenomenal. I love them for the price too. I think they're like under 200 bucks for the pair. Nice and rigid. They have a plastic uh, skeleton in there. Uh, phenomenal. Really great stuff. Well built. You know, I've basically had zero issues and I've hit a couple things with them and I went down once too and, and you know, they're still watertight. So that's great. Um, they are mounted on a set of Happy Trails racks. I'm going to back up so you can see something. Happy Trails uh, an awesome company it's a u.s company and they are one of the few that build um you know symmetrical racks so what i mean by that is the distance from that side to that side and that side to that side is the same most companies uh you know they they offset the exhaust side and then the other side's tucked in closer and i, I can't stand it my ocd flares up pretty badly and you know i start having seizures so anyway the, the all jokes aside the other reality is that it enabled me to put another thing i'm going to talk about which is a spare fuel tank. Uh, and I'll get to that later, but it, it's really the way to go, in my opinion, is symmetrical. It keeps the weight distributed well. It's a US company based out of Idaho, and, and they just make awesome, awesome racks. I would highly suggest Happy Trails. Um, next thing I'm gonna talk about are tires. I, uh, you know, again, any bike can be an adventure bike, but um, you definitely want some decent tires for the, for the terrain you intend to be on. Um, you guys might notice these, maybe you don't. These are Shinko 705s. They are, I would call them an entry level tire, but mostly just because of price. Honestly, they're a great tire. Um, you'll see people complaining about their 
performance in wet weather and sure uh i'll give them that it's you know i've slipped here and there but not not horribly not to the point where i wouldn't buy them again um i think they're pretty phenomenal actually you know especially for the price like i said and they've done great off-road um any fire road tons of grip i love them you know i'll blast through all the fire roads and dirt roads around here without any concern at all next thing i'm going to hit on is the crash bars uh, these have not taken too much of a hit here and there. I've been down once and it was slow, so no big, no big nasty gashes. But uh, overall, I think they're important. You know, <clears throat> you can get the whole big set that goes around the front. Um, but for now, I just have the engine guards on. And again, very happy with them. These are the GV uh, crash bars. You can spend more, you can spend less, you can do whatever the heck you want. My suggestion is uh, protect your engine because those cases are not uh, thick and they are very expensive and it just sucks. That that will ruin your day. You poke one little hole in that case and I mean, good luck with the JB Weld is all I'll say. Uh, next thing. So let's talk about handguards. Um, you know what? Let me move that helmet real quick for you so you can actually see what I'm talking about here. So... I think again for any rider uh, handguards are extremely important um, these are made by a company called machine art moto I'm not hating on Barkbuster at all I know they make a quality product these are truly I think a step beyond though I absolutely love them and that's not because they're a local company it's just because I think they incorporate better technology and they're just slightly nicer um, they have a movable hood uh, as you can see right here that that goes up and down uh, in the winter and summer with a, a set of set screws. I'll show you that in a sec. Really nice solid mounting system right there. All cast aluminum um, and just just well built. See, these are the uh, set screws right here to uh, move that shield up and down for getting more and less airflow. But I, I love them. Machine Armoto, definitely check them out. Awesome stuff. Um, next on the list is this gas tank. I'll tell you a quick story and I'll really make it quick. I almost ran out on a big long ride in upstate New York in the middle of nowhere there was nowhere to go it was bad i was i was nervous as hell uh and there it was getting late too so i literally i think i stalled as i was coming into the gas station we finally found and uh yeah bad situation so that week i threw on this tank it's a rotopax one gallon um and it's mounted to the back of the frame inside of there i think that's you know some people might comment well that's not a necessity well i don't know if you're doing anything you know over 200 miles most bikes don't have that much range and depending on how much you're juicing it i think it's a necessity i think it's smart uh and it's cheap you're not spending a fortune to have that kind of insurance so um go for it next thing i'm going to talk about uh we're almost there guys hang tight here is the cardo pack talk so this is my comm system i use the cardo i've used cena not a fan really did not uh do well for me uh, we used it in dirt riding, we used it in street, and I just, they were a nightmare. I've heard they've gotten better, but the Cardo has just really cornered the market. They're so good now. Uh, I really, I can't say enough good things about having comms. Uh, I'm going to do another video on that, but it saved me a couple times with the wife, with my job. You know, people need to get in touch with you, and then also the, the safety factor and the enjoyment, you know. I'm able to play some music on a long ride. I'm able to have my GPS talking to me. Uh, while I'm riding and uh, it's just kind of the way to go. I think um, You know comms. Yes, it's low on my list, but it's still on my list as a bare necessity. I, I truly do believe that uh, Let's see here. So last thing I'm going to talk about is oh, Well, I should say R. let's get some proper grammar here R pegs um, I, I am not a fan of stock pegs in general I've never seen a motorcycle that had what I would consider good stock pegs they all seem to be kind of junky and garbage, in my opinion. Uh, so these are a set of moose. These aren't expensive. They're rather cheap, actually. And they give you a way, more, a way bigger platform to, to rest your foot on. They also give you a lot more traction. I'm a huge fan. Uh, so, yep, that's, that's going to round up my list. I am actually going to throw in two more things right now that were not on my list. Just because, you know what? Maybe they're not necessities, but I do think they're, they're, they're cheap and they're great to have. So let's do it, guys bonus bonus features right here so the next one i'm going to talk about is this guy right here uh on the africa twin especially this is a bogus uh box this has nothing in it it's supposed to be a little tool kit and it's just garbage and the, the battery's back there so it's just an empty plastic box so it was a perfect place to mount an sae port for charging 
<coughs> or you know for jumping the bike for charging the battery for uh, running an air pump for um, heated uh, clothing uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. I mean Jesus I, that's a that's a 10 gauge wire in there directly hooked to the battery with a 20 no I'm sorry 15 ga uh, 15 amp fuse um, so it'll pretty much handle anything I throw at it uh, in terms of jumping you know air pump whatever I need heated clothes you got it it's there and it's not going to fry anything and it's uh, it's just ideal I absolutely love it yeah it's not the best install but it's not horrible either uh, the last thing, and we're, we're here, we're done, guys. The last thing I'll talk about, and I'm probably going to get some hate for, for this on the uh, comments, and that's okay, guys. Hate on. Are these guys right here. Um, I actually have installed uh, highway pegs, uh, or whatever you want to call them, um, on this bike, and I, I can't say enough good things again. These are, or were, really annoying-looking Harley pegs that had a chrome thing here or something. I don't know. It was ugly. It was some big thing. So I yanked those off and it was just a bolt left and I used some really heavy duty um, heat shrink, two, two layers, really thick stuff. I don't know if you can see it on this video, but this heat shrink uh, came out to about a quarter inch all said and done and uh, totally worth doing. Um, when I'm on, on a long ride, there's nothing like just laying your, your entire leg on here and just stretching out. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's like saved some of the rides I've been on. So. Just something to think about, guys. Definitely worth doing, in my opinion. And uh, so that's going to wrap it up. All right, so that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was useful for you. Uh, it's it's definitely, as I said, it's not a comprehensive list, but it's a, a pretty thorough list, and it's um, it's enough to get you started, and then you can figure out the, 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 the details after that. You know, your, your camping gear, your cooking gear. Uh, your tools, all that stuff will come later. But to get started, these are what I would consider the absolute necessities. So uh, if you enjoyed it, if you think this video brought you something uh, beneficial, great. Uh, leave some comments, whatever you want to do. Uh, throw a thumbs up. It costs you nothing. And uh, these videos cost me a lot. So <laughs> I appreciate all the support and everything lately. I've been getting a bunch of messages on Instagram. So thanks. And uh, yeah, till the next one.